earlier today, uh, I guess it was yesterday, man, it's early in the morning on Wednesday, um, God had me post, uh, as I call it, flip a previous post on the dismissal of the rabbis that you find in Ezekiel. It's the only time there's any real mention of the descendant of King David in Isaiah chapter 11. And it says when he's there, because this is how it reads, basically God says, I'm going to have a reckoning and dismiss the shepherds of the flock. Okay, that's the rabbis, the flock of the Jewish people. Uh, was he, and God kind of left me hanging on that one. I don't know if the flock is only those who are observant or if it's all Jews in general. I think it's all Jews in general of the flock, but he's primarily concerned with those who are religious and practice Judaism in one one manner or another. Okay, that was terrible. Earlier today I uh, posted on YouTube a video regarding uh, the dismissal of the rabbis, the reckoning and dismissal of God, which you never hear them talk about, and this utopia that comes when King David's descendant is here, God's servant David, a shepherd. That's what he calls him in Ezekiel. And I had mentioned that I needed to get my books published for the covenants of God to go into effect, to come with me. Because I am David, and for that matter, I'm Elijah the messenger. So uh, as Elijah, I can speak with the angel of God's presence, who is the angel of the covenant that you desire, and um, make that official, that the new covenant's in effect, because it includes sin forgiveness. Just as the Assyrian Babylonian exiles were forgiven. Uh, because there's another temple to be built. And as I've said, that's not like Christianity. That doesn't mean everybody goes to heaven. You have to be written into the soul of remembrance uh, as those who revere and esteem his name. And this is coming from Malachi 3. Now the dismissal, the dismissal is... Uh, from the eyes of God. It's not dismissal from being rabbis. It's not dismissal from being the synagogues. It's, uh, they, they join those who do not heed and reveal his name. You know, that's kind of hard to believe. Every single rabbi, yes. And we know it's from day, when, the, when Moshe comes because they, uh, God says, I'm going to dismiss them and I'm going to appoint my shepherd David. My servant David to be a shepherd uh, amongst them. Now, that's, it's, and be a leader amongst them. Okay, that would be me. And um, it has nothing to do with being a king, establishing the divinic dynasty, or being a ruler over them. It says ruler among them. And basically, what what is being said is, it's my teachings that are in these, that God gave me in these books that he dictated, and I typed, it was so long, probably, it wasn't straight dictation by any means, but that's the effect of it, they're not my words, they're his. And um, that's, that's, that will be my position as a leader amongst them. This is what God wants known for the day of the Lord, and not this messianic era, that you've heard about throughout your lives, where people will live to be a thousand years, the entirety of the world will speak Hebrew, uh, the world will be perfected, all of Israel will follow Torah, uh, Moshiach will study Torah day in and day out, and uh, uh, quite frankly, I really look at it. God says they, 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 they have uh, uh, done everything you can do with the Torah. Really, I just deal with the prophecies, uh, the prophets, the day of the Lord, and uh, these false teachings 
primarily they come from Tobias Singer of Outreach Judaism and uh, Jews for Judaism. And the only person I ever really see is Michael Skobak. I know that there are others in that organization. And uh, because of them, you say, well, wait a minute, you just got a handful of rabbis? Most of us don't even think about this, line, this Messianic era. Um, but every rabbi is dismissed. And I'll, I'll put it to you like this. This is the God of Israel. This is not Jesus Christ. Okay? He is not a human being. It doesn't bother him one bit to punish all for the wrongs of a few. So it's simple. I mean, he, you know, he took credit for a plague that had killed 70,000 Israelites because David, to put David to a test, which, by the way, he failed, and because of that failure, he finally got it right. That's when he went and bought the Temple Mount. It was a thresher place, a wheat thresher or something. I, I'm not sure. Um, it's kind of a restitution to God. But, you know, see, that doesn't bother him. Absolutely nothing bothers him, actually. But he's not human. You know, he's an entity... You know, he says, let's, let's form man in our image, and he's talking to the uh, his Holy Spirit, the angel of his presence. And and uh, the image, you know, it, it doesn't mean we're human beings because he's human beings. The image is... We are beings in existence, living beings with emotions. He does have emotions. But, you know, that's what he stops right there. That's the image, and that's the only image. He's not human being. Doesn't care to the Christians one bit, saying that the God of this planet, the God of creation, is a human being, or will become a human being. The idea <laughs> would appall him. But yes, he will. He will. And, uh, you know, part of it is he says, well, if the other rabbis don't like it, uh, they better, they better, uh, they better get on about it. And uh, tell them, well, wait a minute. Just tell them what they're doing wrong. And if that doesn't work, go to their cloths, go to their people, go on top of them. You got numbers. Uh, same thing the Christians over the Jews, they got the numbers. Uh, we're going to break those numbers down. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna make it so that the few have a heavier slingshot with me here, and with what he can do with me, and the things that he has taught me, and we're you know completely misapplying Isaiah fifty three is a snare. It's for this day. So many things are. Jesus is a Jew. I'm a Gentile. Now you've never heard anybody say Moshiach. Moshiach is a Gentile and comes from a Christian country, but yet there it is, Isaiah 63. Who is this coming from the dawn? It is I, God. Well, who does he come with? The prophet like Moses. And who am I? The righteous servant, the descendant of David, described in Isaiah 53, as the sages believe, and is put into the town as the leper scholar. Well, I am a scholar. Uh, I mean, I went to Pennsylvania University, then I went to law school. And I've had three cancers, two that just about killed me. Um, they, they're just going to have to stop all that. And, and God wants those books he dictated to me to become a part of Judaism. For an understanding of what a man of divine beings is. For an understanding that the prophets were all men of divine beings. That Moses was a man of divine beings. These things weren't known. They've been put before you. We've had over 2,000 people uh, typing in the name searching. They must be typing in Moshe Act, Isaiah 53, or words of that effect for me to be getting the views that I'm getting. Um, so it's people who, you know, if, if no rabbi has looked at it, I would be amazed. But what, it, what really needs to be done here is those that are listening, you need to go to your rabbis and tell them, look, God's got it. We believe God's here. In other words, be the witnesses. 
What do the witnesses do? Well, you got to be a servant to God. He needs you to recognize his prophet and tell as many people as you can who can believe our report. Who can believe what we now believe? Who is the arm of the Lord that revealed them? Well, it's me. Now, I just, uh, uh, well, it's, it's uploading right now. I'm getting ready to put verse 1 of Isaiah 53, covering just that topic. And that's got a lot of good information. I'm going to follow it up with verse 2 and 3 and 4. They've been done before. Um, so, but they'll have a little different title. So I think they will call Leper Scholar versus Jesus round one and round two, et cetera, et cetera. There's about seven of them. I'll get to that throughout the day. But uh, as I had mentioned, the books being published would put, you know, all Jews on notice that, okay, you have a clean slate. She need to come back to synagogue. And, uh, and and as I was also saying, um, this sin. See, it's it's full of these words like he was wounded for our sins. That the Christians just jump all over. But he doesn't die. There's no crucifixion in it. And it turns out all these words have to do with me going through to his five refinement. In his power, he has crushed me bruising, maltreated me to no end. And you hadn't been maltreated until God does it too. It's good. It's real good. And as I said, it's what one of my first lessons was, Keith, your pain doesn't mean anything to me. I have a place I'm taking it, and this is how I do it. And uh, of course, we've had endless fights about it um, and arguments. But after 13 years, and, and it has slowed down. Every year has been more intense. And that includes the days that I'm doing this right now. Boy, and I've been complaining. I wrote your books. I've been <laughs> And he says, hey, that's, this is makes it better. I can get you excited again because you've been out sweeping in so much work. Um, but uh, but it, there's been great change in me. And, and, and a really huge part of it is it's not just changing me it's because he's he can use his power on my emotions he can be standing in front of people and saying i'm mushy at and you know that's not something normally i could do without just being embarrassed or i see the look of people's faces of disbelief and and that kind of feeling that you get from that see i don't have to feel that he, he prevents it it's part of the process you know in a way i'm being changed in a brutal fashion. But at the same time, in the years to come, and look at me, I was supposed to be dead 20 years ago. And I'm probably looking at another 20 or 30 of one fun time, doing things I could never do of my own. I just uh, wasn't a very social person, let's put it that way. But that's gonna be coming out, but basically, Instead of waiting for the books, God has decided this is as good as publishing those books. And the rabbis are on notice. He said, I want you to tell. A reckoning is a judgment. And God's judgment is you're dismissed. You will never see the scroll of remembrance. And you're sin free. And you practice Judaism to the T, specifically those who are orthodox. And that's, you know, that's why you take into account the amendment. The amendment is being mindful of the laws I gave Moses at Orb. It's in Malachi 3, right before you see Elijah, when it says he recounsels family members one to the other. Well, that's how he does it. What does Elijah get? One, he gets two or three people, and he's basically just telling them to come back. Two, God is here. Look at what all's happened. Look what the people are saying. Listen to the report of the witnesses. Three, against the Christians, uh, the man of Isaiah 53 is a Gentile, he's not a Jew. Can't be Jesus. Oh, and also Isaiah 11. This man comes from the stuff of Jesse, not the failed ancestral tree. That's where Jesus comes from. His line is the line of kings that we read in Kings 1 and Kings 2 that uh, he banished. He banished when these uh, Babylonians uh, destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. 
and banish him. That's it. No bind of your line will ever rule again. So Jesus couldn't have ever been a king, a king of the Jews. Well, he wasn't even King David, that's for sure. And anyway, uh, so much to do, so much to get done. But uh, this is what, you know, God is just putting them in a headlock saying, y'all going to listen to me this time. You learned me. You don't listen to my prophets. My prophets. Although I guess in a sense of them. But, you know, I'm a righteous servant. Isaiah 53 describes a righteous servant. David, King David was a righteous servant. Elijah is a righteous servant. Prophet Mark Moses is a righteous servant. And uh, that's, that's just, you know, I'm going to handle it all. I mean, can you imagine God doing what he's doing with me with four different men? And they don't have a description. I have a description, which, again, I just put in verse 1. And uh, where you can find the version of my commentary on Isaiah 53, that specifically says it's me. The first book, we just, uh, God wrote it so that it just sounded like I could be saying it's me. But not so the second book, The Life of God's Righteous Servant. That's my life. And there's no holding punches on it. And we do Isaiah 53 in the last chapter again, this time specifically relating the events of my life, as you just read, to each verse. And uh, that's what I'm... Uh, We'll be, we'll be uh, uploading to YouTube today. I'm sure we'll get through all of it. I have had some computer problems. Uh, but anyway, that's just a, a short message because the, clearly there are a handful of people who are really watching what I say. I mean, w within hours of me posting something, you know, there's a quick through. And so, you know, whether they know each other, this is I don't know. I'm in the dark on the sea. God won't tell me those kind of things. I don't know what people are thinking. I don't know what Toby has seen or has heard or not heard. I can only make my own suppositions. Anything I couldn't know of my own, they don't tell me. And there's all kinds of reasons for that, but some of them are obvious. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, even time frames. I mean, I can only suppose that we're getting closer and closer to something breaking on this in one way or another. And basically that comes down to the witnesses. You know, uh, you, you can't just read it and, and think to yourself, oh, I believe it. If you believe, you need to do something proactive, whatever, anything you can think of. Um, bring it to the attention of your rabbi. Uh, and, and you're sin free now. You need to get back to synagogue if you're not at synagogue. If you're just sitting at home on the internet saying, I'm a good Jew. <laughs> you need to be mindful of his laws. You need to attend the high holidays. You need to show the world that more Jews practice Judaism than Christians practice Christianity. You know, the percentage-wise, Judaism is, is, I believe, still ahead. Um, Okay, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other topic I haven't looked at in quite some time. There, there's some studies that come out every few years regarding Muslims, Christians, and Jews. And uh, but I thought Jews kind of led the way percentage-wise, not number-wise. So, um, is there anything else? Nope.